Okay, so it's about two o'clock. Um, I think we'll go ahead and get started. A few people are, are popping on still, but um, in the interest of time, uh, first, I want to welcome you um, to our IGC webinar series. I'm um, Megan Owens, one of the retail account managers, along with Jessica DeGraff, who's also on the webinar with us today. Um, today's topic is five merchandising mistakes and how to avoid them. Um, oops. Sorry about that. Um, before we get started, um, just wanted to give you guys a few little housekeeping housekeeping tips. Um, all of our attendees will be in listen only mode, but we love participation. So please ask questions um, in the comments in the chat. Um, Jessica today will be the one who is going to be uh, manning the Q&A and, and the chat and either responding back to you or recording those questions um, for our speaker. So please, if you have anything um, you want to ask, ask away. Um, there'll be a Q&A session at the end of our webinar. So what we'll do today is um, our speaker will present at the end of that, all of your questions, we'll, we'll pose all of those to her at the end, um, rather than trying to answer things and going through them. Um, this webinar is being recorded. So just keep that in mind. And if you have folks who um, are on your team that are unable to attend today, in a few days, we'll be sending a link out to all of you who are registered um, with a link to the recording. So there will be an opportunity to watch this after the fact. And that this and all of our webinars, the whole series that we've done um, beginning in the fall are all available on YouTube. Again, you don't have to write down or memorize this link that we've got up there. We'll go ahead and send that out um, when we send the email to the follow-up of this webinar. So I am very excited to welcome back our presenter today, um, Ann Obarski, and she is the CEO of Merchandising Concepts. Um, she's a highly requested international speaker for nursery and landscape associations, associations and green industry businesses, um, an author and co-author of several books, including Making Your Customer Service Making Customer Service Contagious for Garden Centers, excuse me. Um, and she's a contributing columnist to Garden Center Magazine. You guys um, may remember a few of our webinars ago, and if you weren't on it, I'd really encourage you to go back and watch. Um, we had Anne on to talk a little bit about customer service and talk about um, making your teams dynamic um, and, and really giving that 100% to your customers and, and plans for the as you're planning for the spring. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that webinar, um, it is up on that link that I gave you guys before. Um, but without further ado, in the interest of time, because Anne's got a ton of great information, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Anne. Thank you. All right, let's see if we can get us. Um, started. All right, so I am thrilled that you are on the call today, whether it's beautiful where you are, whether it's snowy or ice cold, I'm glad that you are here because there must be a reason why you said, I've gotta be on this call. So I'm gonna be quickly um, talking about five merchandising mistakes and how to avoid them. It's going to go fast. There are going to be lots of pictures. And before we start, I wanna just kind of give you a little bit of an idea of where these pictures came from. For many years, I have traveled around to the state associations for garden centers and I have taken pictures. We have gone on bus trips and I've taken a number of pictures. Most of these pictures, I would say 90% of them I took. So, you know, don't shoot the photographer. Um, some of them are good and some of them are not so good, but you'll get the idea. The other thing I wanted to mention is in those pictures, you will see that everybody's garden center looks different. There are some garden centers that are all green and all product and all um, uh, growing plants. And then there are some that are highly gift oriented. And then there's the wonderful meld in the middle. One of the things that I always talk about, and you can Google it, please don't do it while you're on the webinar, but um, Google what the percentage is of women shoppers, women decision makers. And you will find that 80% of all business decisions are made by women. Now, if I asked you what percentage of your clientele, people who walk into your garden center on a daily basis, what percentage are women? 
is probably a good chance that there are around that 75, 80%. So knowing what women see in other places that they shop relates directly to your garden center because she may walk into your garden center and she may need a small, I just went to my garden center and picked up um, a bag of dirt for my orchids, but I also bought a pair of earrings. So that may sound like a little weird, but that's where we're going. That's what we have seen for a number of years in garden centers that the retail end is coming in there. Another reason why I bring that up as a retail consultant is the fact that your retail products will bring you higher gross margin and will bring that customer back over and over and over because you got something different and new. Instead of having four or five good, great Saturday weekends once the weather breaks and then that they don't come back until they come back to buy mums and pumpkins. So we need that going on. So I wanted to set the stage there before we get started. So let's start taking a look at what are the places that women like to shop? Well, anybody on this call is a female goes home goods is a wonderful place to get lost in and target is also if you're a male it might be your uh and if you're a golfer you may find yourself enamored with a new pair of golf shoes and a golf shirt in a pro shop and on the other hand you might be in dick's sporting goods for a long time but mark my word take a look at the merchandising in dick's it is beautiful in most pro shops it is as well why because we want to get you to buy it also could be if you went to Disney. I don't know how many of you on the call have ever been to Disney, either one of them. But Disney does a fabulous job on their merchandising. They also do a great job of making sure that the gift shop is right after whatever ride you are on so that you have to go through the gift shop to be able to buy merchandise. It's a brilliant way to do it, but their merchandising is incredible. And then if you've ever been to this place, you can put in the chat, where do you think that is? Well, actually, that's Whole Foods. And Whole Foods used to be made fun of a long time ago and say it was Whole Paycheck. But look at the beauty in just fruit then vegetables that are there. And that's what we see. That's what our eyes see, which is why we can say that 85% of what we remember is what we see. It's what we do through sight. So I'm going to talk about five areas. I'm going to give you a quick little three button uh, debrief after each one of them. So if you're taking notes, you're writing on your computer, I'll give you some ideas where and if you've got a question, mark that down so that at the end I can cover it for you. Let's take a look at mistake number one. Now I am, you have to understand, I am a very positive person. I believe that the glass is full and frankly, I can make it even more full because I know where the water is. So I'm not a negative person. So I'm not gonna spend as much time on what are the mistakes necessarily because you're gonna start seeing them. But then I wanna say, what is it that we can be doing better? First thing that your customer is gonna see is gonna be your exterior and your entrance. Extremely important. If I drove into your parking lot today and I saw this van, I would think, that's pretty cool. I would like to be that person or Maybe I need to write down their name and number because I would love to do business with a personal garden coach. That sounds fun to me. Maybe I look at this. This was a picture I took in Missouri of Oma's Barn. And I thought, what a great name of Oma's Barn. It sits on a little country road. She's got a farm behind it, but the most darling, wonderful place to get lost, just walking into the door. Now, looking at an entrance like this, if you've got a garden center and I'm out there just perusing for 15, 20 minutes, that's a good sign because I haven't even walked through the door yet. So what is intriguing me to be able to say, I want to go see what's behind that white door. It may look like this. Ha, do you recognize the proven? I, I was not paid to do this, but there are proven winner containers right there. It just happened to match the chairs. I thought that was brilliant. Um, but I also like how you notice where it says, please return your carts here. Um, doesn't it frustrate you when you ever go to a grocery store and people like leave them out like, like, you know, garbage out in the parking lot? I'm like, were you not taught to bring them back? 
So even something so simple as making sure the carts are returned, making sure that it just looks lovely, that people go, oh, there was a reason why I stopped here today. You know, I didn't, I didn't ever own a garden center. I wish I would have. I may still do that. Maybe there's another time in my life. But if I did, it would look like this. This picture was out of California. Doesn't it look Californian? You know, just gorgeous, gorgeous ivy and the beautiful plants. And I just can't wait to get in there. It looks, I am a fairy garden person. Um, I have a huge fairy garden. Actually, you could pray for me because it is, it's a sickness. Um, I have them everywhere. Actually, I'm known as the fairy garden house on the corner that the, the kids come to take a look through my fence at my fairy gardens. And I think there's probably fairy gardens in there. Um, and then I run another favorite place. <laughs> this place, when I lived in Ohio, was my absolute favorite garden center to go to because nobody in my mind did merchandising like this company. Um, they just did a superb job. No matter what time of the year that you went there, they always, always did a great job of merchandising by color. Look at the pots, look at the different colors that they have in there, intriguing, wanting me to go into their garden center. So first impressions are really important. And in those first impressions, they're formed in the first 10 seconds. If I drive down the street and I pull into your parking lot and I, I really can't tell where I'm parking because maybe the lines aren't clear. Maybe I don't see um, the signing really well. Maybe it was hard for me to get there in the first place. That kind of helps forming in that first 10 seconds. The next thing that is important is that now I've got five to 15 feet. So if I were you, I would go out to my garden center and I'd whack, walk myself backwards and I would say, all right, what's happening now? within five to 15 feet of walking through that door. What am I seeing? What am I, what, it, what is on my left and my right? What's bringing me into the store? I'm gonna talk about the decompression zone because it also feeds into the front door. You probably have heard the term decompression zone. Doesn't happen at everybody's garden center. It may not happen at yours. But if you have ever been somewhere, um, hardware stores for the most part do this. Um, and where you have an exterior door and then you have an interior door. Some people think it's kind of fun to put stuff in that entrance in that little area. I don't. That's not something I believe is good design. But that decompression zone tells you that when you go through that first set of doors, that the brain is kind of shutting down a little bit. And now I'm preparing to walk into that second set of doors and now into Nirvana, your nursery and garden center. And so that's a decompression zone. It's a breathing area. It's time to, to relax and say, what am I going to, what am I going to see? But, but frankly, triggering emotions. You know, I showed you a bunch of pictures up there with Target and, and Home Goods and a pro shop, as well as Dick's. And I will guarantee you that most of the things in there are triggered by emotion if I'm going to buy them. Oh gosh, that pair of golf shoes looks really great. Oh, new draperies. That that's what I want in home goods. Target, it's that dollar section, or what is it now? Three, five to the right when you first walk into Target, that you just tell yourself, I'm going to walk past there. But no, there could be something in there I need. Triggers my emotion and engages the senses. Let me ask you, when I walk into your garden center, what am I seeing? What am I hearing? What am I smelling? What am I tasting and what am I feeling? Now, you may not have all of these. And you may say, Anne, we can't do that in our garden center. We can't have popcorn or we can't, uh, we can't, I don't know, we can't play music. Um, we can't do some of these things. But your customer is used to all of these things. They're used to hearing music. They're used to seeing things beautifully displayed. They're used to the smell of things and sometimes even having taste. And, and what can I feel? I wanna to touch that. Is that a real flower? I wanna I want know what it's like. So maybe when you first walk in, again, proven winners, what can I say? Is that a beautiful, that's a beautiful display. So look at the, again, I took this picture. This is where I'm saying, give me a break. Should have had a little bit more lighting on it, but I'm sure that when I took it, I was, I was amazed and you'll hear me use this word throughout the, the webinar is the word statement, making a statement, making a statement with hanging baskets, gorgeous colors, some of the little um, 
patio stones that are put in between, but just beauty and it's up. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's not on the ground. It's up for me to enjoy. Another thing that we take a look at in a garden center, and frankly, when I posted this and I was working on this webinar, I said to myself, oh, son of a God, yeah, our umbrella's overhead. I don't remember taking that picture, but I took the picture because of the flooring. Now, this flooring is beautiful. You've got a gravel, um, and I'm not sure if that's, uh, if it's got a glaze on it or not, but that walkway certainly does. The idea of using different types and forms of material to make sure that your customer sees everything. If you go into any of the big stores that I showed you, it could be in Whole Foods, you're gonna have a walkway that goes around the perimeter of the store. And then you're gonna have aisles that you're going to be seeing of merchandising. And we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's tr making you travel through the store because I want to get through the whole store before I purchase from you. And one of the things that we like to do is um, really talk about the way to get your customer through that store and wherever the pay station is. And again, the next few areas that we're going to be talking about over the mistakes, I'm going to take you through that walkway of the store and see if in fact, that's the way you have it in your store. Now, this picture is not in a garden center, and you probably can tell that that maidenhair fern does not look as fresh as it would be in a garden center. Well, this is another one of my favorite stores because I think they do great merchandising, and this happens to be Pottery Barn, but it could also be your gift shop in your garden center, and that gift shop, ladies and gentlemen, could be as big as 10 by 10. It does not, you don't have to change your name into a gift store if that's not what you are. But something so sweet as something like this, I could pick up a hanging basket for my best friend for Valentine's Day or for Easter and one of those bunnies and a candle. And now I have purchased three things which we like add on selling because I saw it beautifully merchandised. It gives me a reason to buy. So when I come into a store like this, I want you to take a look at everything that's going on in this particular slide. To me, it's beautiful. There's a lot of things going on. Some of you may go, oh, it's overdone. But if you notice there's a, on the walls in the back, there's a lot of different texture going on. You've got plants that are above on the walls. You've got that, that ladder that is now pitched at a nice angle where you can use it for shelving. How brilliant. Notice you've got those little white patio lights. They are everywhere. Go to Costco. They have a ton of them. Um, you'll notice that now we've got this beautiful area in front of you with a book that is open and just a wonderful place to stop. The idea in good merchandising is to help you stop and enjoy and then hopefully buy. That's the goal. Well, shoot, Anne, what do we do with grass seed? Well, there you go. Does that not make you look, isn't that pretty? I know, it's carpet. I took the picture, it's carpet on that floor. I went, who in their right mind puts carpet on the floor in a greenhouse? But it looks pretty. And so now I see how beautifully displayed it is. I see that it's well stocked. I see the color. My eye is drawn to it. I say to myself, these people did a very, very good job in their merchandising. So in this first section, we're talking about the exterior and the entrance. What does your parking lot look like? What does your front door look like? Is it clean and neat? Women make a decision that if it's not clean and neat, the rest of your their experience is gonna be dirty. Um, heaven forbid, I should have to ask if you have a bathroom because I know it won't be clean. So exterior and, and entrance is extremely important. Is it clean? Is it accessible? Do I have the capability of getting into your store without tripping over something or somebody who's watering and I've got to play jump rope with the hose? Um, and what about the buggy controllers? There's somebody making sure that those buggies get back to where they need to be. And last, moving foot traffic. I need to make sure that that foot traffic is coming in that front door and it's not just stopping and you're not walking in saying, this is the only thing I needed, I need to pay for it. I wanna create in your mind, what else? What else do you have? Next is one of my favorite areas to talk about, that is displays. Here are some of the common errors in display. First one is either having too much on display or having too little. The second one is too many props. Um, we'll talk about that. I'll show you what I mean by the word props. The third happens too frequently, which is changed too seldom. Oh, Sue was working there this morning. I told her to fill that in. She didn't get it filled in. 
yeah, it doesn't look too good, but I'll get to it later. I'll get to it again. Change too seldom and lack of attention to detail. Very, very important when it comes to displays. So I want you to think about displays can be as little as 15 items, 10 items, or it can be as many as, well, we'll, we'll take a look and you, I'll, I'll get your opinion. This picture I took at a mart and you're gonna go, and this has absolutely nothing to do with garden centers. And you're right, it doesn't. I want you to think about it. I want you to look at it. And I want you to think about where your eyes are going in this particular picture. This is a glassed in um, display in a mart, in a wall. And I walk past it and I go, oh, I love those pumpkins. But I looked at it, I go, hot squash, huh? Now look at how you read. You read hot squash left to right, correct? So you read hot squash and then your eyes went down. They should have gone down from that blue one underneath the word hot over to the striped one underneath wash, squash, squash. And then it should have, and you're going hot, and how did you know that? It should have gone down to the orange ones on that left-hand side of the picture. If in fact that did that, it means it's a Z pattern. So when we look at good displays and how they're set up, they are set up how we read. We read left to right. So we're reading left to right, we go back down and we read left to right again. And that's how a good display is. Now this next display isn't necessarily example of a Z pattern, but it is an example of height to bottom. This happens to be from my garden center here. I live in Charleston, South Carolina, and it is a beautiful garden center that does a great job on their display work. And I love the fact of the pottery in two different kinds, well, many different kinds of patterns in there, but we have solids, we have prints, we also have the green going on. But if you look at that top one, that very top um, center uh, box, your eye is probably going to go left before it goes right. And again, a very easy to put together, somebody's got to be able to do DIY in your garden center, build something like this that could be used over and over and over. Because imagination is the key to planning eye-catching and appealing displays. If you're, if, you know, people say to me all the time, and I'm just not good at it. Well, here's, here's an idea. Go to Instagram and click on store merchandising. I've got a board on there of all sorts of stuff. I stole, used, chose the pin on my board, which is nothing but store merchandising ideas. If you're not good at it, go copy, find somebody, find a look that you like, a store you like going into, because imagination is the key. I thought this one was a fun one in a very, very simple garden center flooring in which it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. All it is, is probably a pallet. And now we put an antique tractor front on the front of it, but it just made me stop and go, well, son of a gun, my, my granddad had one of those. Isn't that cool? And now I'm starting to build that relation and isn't that fun? And what else am I gonna find in my experience while I happen to be in your location? This, these two are very fun as well. Garden Center on the left, very nice, beautiful garden center in Los Angeles. They actually also have a florist in their garden center, but the beauty of using very simple props to get things up, now those are orchids, we all know that, but they were able to get them up and down. Look at the beautiful chandeliers that they put with that, with um, the uh, branches and so forth that are on them. I mean, it's just, just elegant. But we flip over to the next one and we've just got a cute little red bistro set there and a couple of hammocks. But notice that your eyes go up to the top. They go across those hammocks and now down to the bottoms with faces on those pots are. Statement in color. We have purple orchids. Look at the background that they did with just that simple backdrop that you can still see through, gives you an airy feeling. It's still a natural background. You still have the ferns hanging on either side. You've got the three different steps. It does not go down to the floor. You'll hear me say that until I wanna, yeah, it doesn't go down to the ground, but look at the beauty on just seeing purple. How about something like this? What would it take if you've got I don't think outside where well, you'd have to probably stain it really well or inside of your greenhouse. How many different ways could you use this for spring, for summer, 
for fall and winter, holiday, all the different ways to make the customer stop and go, look at all these fun things. I need that, I need that uh, pillow. Oh, look at those candles that are in here. Oh gosh, that welcome sign would work just perfect. And that basket, you see, I'm already trying to buy four or five things because of what I have seen there. Color. This one at a mart, I looked at this and I said, wow, I've seen these little guys before, but I never paid attention. Why? Because the color, the orange made them just pop. Are there very many items on this display? No, they are just a few of them, but they are done small on the top, medium sized on the middle, bigger on the bottom. And they are done in such a way that you wanna go, oh, that cat on the front, I've got a friend I know who would love to buy that. How about something simple like this? Going to, to a hardware store, getting those rods, uh, industrial look, your customers love that. And notice that you are doing it, you're colorizing it from light to dark. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, that you can find that on the internet, but nodding them and making them look spectacular. But if you also notice people go, but Hannah, I, I don't have that much room. I, I, I don't have space for that. I will tell you that that doesn't take up that much space. It's only as deep as those scars are, probably no more than a foot deep. And I don't have the picture of the bottom of the feet, but it doesn't take up that much room and it could be used for other things. Can this be done outside? Absolutely, it can be done outside. Look at this arbor. Look at the steps that run on either side of the arbor. There are proven winners in there, aren't there? B. Wow. Okay, so we've got, I, I love, 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 love those steps. I love the fact that I'm standing there looking at that going, wow, I wish that was my backyard. Well, I wonder if I could get that arbor. I wonder how those, um, the hydrangeas, um, what, I wonder how that would look in my house. It's making me stop and look. You don't have to have the scars. You don't have to have the cutesy. You don't have to do that. Just taking something like this and making it look a little different. So what happens when it comes to displays? I put four on here. Normally I'm three, but this is four. Having the correct amount of merchandise in a display is, is critical. It can be uh, on the ground if it's plant material. How many do you have? And how can you tighten it up to look like you have a lot? Making sure it's changed frequently, attention to detail. And I didn't tell you this one before, but between your shoulders and your knees. So if you stand up and you are five, eight to six foot, take a look at where your shoulder is and where your knees are. And your knees should be the height of the lowest part of whatever your display is. You know, and why would I want to do that? Well, statistics and data shows that customers really don't like to bend over. When a customer is in a grocery store and they're going down the aisle to get um, cereal or what have you, they're going to pick it out from whatever is really right from arm's length. They really don't want to bend over to pick it up because in Paco Underhill's book on why we buy, he says there's the detail of the butt brush. And none of us like to have our butt brushed. So that's why shoulders to knees. Mistake number three, and I've got this one underneath a big umbrella called merchandising. And I'm gonna talk about two things, store layout and planogram because they go together. Store layout is if there was nothing in your store, it was perfectly naked, everything, nothing outside, nothing inside. What do you really want that store to look like? And that fits right into the word planogram. If you've ever worked in any kind of a retail store, all retail stores work on a planogram. If I go into Target in Miami, Florida, or Target in Portland, Oregon, or in Boston, or in San Diego, or in Texas, they're all gonna have about the same planogram. I'm gonna walk in and that dollar, $3, $5 area is gonna be to my right. I'm gonna go straight ahead. We're gonna have ladies and children's and what have you. I'm gonna go down to the end, I'm gonna turn, that's gonna go into men's and so forth because there is a planogram. Because I've decided I know what's on the wall, I know what's on every one of those shelving units, I know what's on every fixture. And if I happen to uh, not be able to come into work for three months and I'm the store manager, I don't have somebody going, oh, we'll just find a place to put it or find a spot. Find a spot's not the idea. Having a plan is. And that's why when we jump to the strategies for merchandising, we've got to create that experience. Get them in, keep them moving, let them see everything that you have. Make sure that it is efficient. 
that it is not stepping over things, that it doesn't make sense in their mind. And lastly, we want it to increase sales. Um, this next slide is extremely important because it's going to get you into that front door. Remember how we were at the front door? I want you, if you're sitting in your garden center right now, to take a look at it. If you're not, you know what's there. Walk in through the front door, and I'm going to kind of turn like this. And I want you to look at what's 45 degree angle from where you're standing right now. What's in that area? Area could be five, by, five feet by five feet. It could be 16 by 20. But what's in the right 45 degree angle line of sight when you walk in that front door? Why? because retail shows us that that is your highest gross margin, highest turnover area, whatever it is, whatever it is, that happens to be an area that you turn a lot. Maybe, maybe it's seasonal, you know, maybe you do it by season. Maybe right now it's early spring. Maybe you get it into Easter. Um, maybe it's, maybe it, it, it's into barbecue and 4th of July and so forth. And that's fine because that's telling me if I ask you, where does that business come from? you'd be able to tell me. Also, in that area, what's on that wall? Not just the 45 degree angle, what's on that wall? Because that's a right variant power wall. Is it shelved? Is it flat walled? Um, does it have um, rods on it? What's on that wall? Because frankly, that's a power wall. Are you making the most of your area when you first walk in? A lot of times I walk into stores and they're a mess. And, and that doesn't make any sense. And that makes me stop. Remember when we saw the picture of uh, Whole Foods? Well, that's a, a good point to bring to your head is that most of the time when you walk into a grocery store and you turn to the right, produce is right there. Beautiful, smell, wonderful. Let me get the oranges and the apples. And oh my gosh, this is gorgeous. In the summer, what do they put out there? They put um, just fresh corn on the cob is right there for you. That is top, top turnover, biggest gross margin for a grocery store. So that's why they have it there. So art form on freestanding displays, those are the things that stand by themselves and make a statement. Okay, so I said I wasn't going to get involved in things that I didn't like and that were negative. So let me ask you some questions. Does this make a statement? I took this picture, somebody's office. Let me ask you a question. Does this end cap make a statement? What does it tell me? Does that make a statement? You know, as a consultant, I want to know how much business is done on all four of those shelves right there in the center. When did the last, when did you put that in there? How long has all that stuff been there? How much is it turning? You got a 20% off sign. Um, tell me, how's that working for you? Um, I don't even know what you have there. It's a mess. As far as I'm concerned, write it all out of stock and give it to Goodwill or give it to somebody, but, but it is a wasted space. Well, then we've got extra space, don't we, Anne? Okay, so I came around the corner and I saw this. And I thought, okay, how about like a can of Rust-Oleum maybe? And then I'm like, well, no, those shelves aren't even straight. And then I saw this one and I thought, well, that's novel. Who got finished working a little early? I took these pictures. I can put these up there. I saw these in garden centers. So do we know that it is important that every single square foot of business or area in your, your store is important. I stand behind this sentence that I wrote, which is every product costs money to stock it. Make sure it has earned its right to be there. Focus on the return on space. If you bought it, is it selling? You do not own a museum. You know, um, I also say that, you know, retail merchandise is kind of like bananas. They don't get better the browner they get because the only thing they're good for is what? Put it in the chat. You can type these words, chocolate banana bread, chocolate chip banana bread. I have a great recipe. Send me, a, send me an email. All right. So another one of my favorite garden centers, although I never did a lot of business in this one, but happened to be very close to where I lived. But I took this picture because I said, holy smoke, this was about a uh, 20 foot gondola bay. And I went, look at that merchandising. It is centered, it is, it is color, it is what we call ribboning. Ribboning means, take a look at the top shelf where the, um, uh, the purple is, um, and, and gosh, now I forget who's that was. Um, anyway, 
may, look how it goes down. So they're, they're creating a ribbon effect all the way down. That is another way to merchandise. If you didn't like that one, we can switch to this one. Now, this one is all chemicals as well, but I want you to look very carefully at this slide. What thing, what, one thing that they did on this slide that we see being done uh, in many, many stores, including grocery stores, is they have done what's called fronting. And fronting is where you pull your merchandise to the very front edge of that shelving unit, even though uh, we know, I mean, look there, there's not a whole lot behind it. There are, they're all fronted there, but they're kind of empty, but it looks like you're in business. When that becomes a point, point of hassle for me is when there's holes and all of a sudden I'm going, gee, you know, are these guys in business or are they out of business? So when it comes to merchandising, three things that I think is very important is creating a planogram, both inside and outside. <clears throat> Where is it going to go? Can you change that? Yes, you can change it. But at least it gives you an idea, maybe quarterly, of what we're going to do. Uh, or maybe it's going to stay the same, but that one particular area, when you first come in the door, that's going to change. I need to know the planogram. I need to know if I start working there today, where do I put stock when I get it in? What's the line of sight? Um, let's go back to this one again. Do you see how tall that back where it says Bonide products and so forth? you see how tall that is? It's not exactly a great thing. Um, and if I'm not mistaken now, I think I did this at a trade show. They didn't want to see on the back end. But if you've got that in your store, it creates a wall. And on the other side or this side, I can steal something. If I chose and I had a big tote with me, I could put one of those Bonide products in my, in my purse and be out the door and you'd never know the difference. So that's why I always say, look at your line of sight it is very important to make sure that your theft factor is reduced and that gets to inventory control if i asked you right now what's your what's your percentage of loss through theft um i sure hope it's under one percent or less than that and knowing how to control your inventory when you stock how you restock and not having those messy ends of going well it's we didn't sell it last year, so we're going to bring it back and see if it sells again this year. All right, my next one, mistake number four, is it's a big bug. Uh, one of them is more of a bugaboo to me than the other, but they're both about equal, is signage and lighting. Signage to me is the silent salesperson. It is the one that provides product information. You are not going to have somebody always on hand, always there to help the customer at every single day. You're just not, at least where the customer is. They're back there in the back of the Arborvitaes and somebody is over here um, looking for potting soil or mulch and somebody's out, out there looking at hanging baskets and you just don't have enough hands. But if I have a question of, is this really good if I've got Southern exposure um, and I can't find anybody and I'm looking going, mm, do I really wanna spend $40 for that hanging basket if I don't know that I'm gonna put it on my porch and it's gonna die? So if I don't even have a sign to read, I may leave. So providing product information is important. Graphics reinforce your store image. Proven Winners does a fabulous job of this. I know very few people that don't know the name and can't write it probably on a piece of paper right now because they know that graphic. Do you have things like that hanging around your garden center, hanging posters and banners, as well as digital? We now know that people will stand there and they'll watch a TV screen. They'll watch, you know, what you put up there. Um, digital gets me engaged. Now, I tell you that you need to put signage and some people, at least they spelled it right. But frankly, even if it does, does it need a sign? No, how about a sign like this? A cafe in a garden center. Enter this way. Well, I don't want to enter that way yet because I want to see what's on that cart. I think it looks beautiful. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna make my way. Look at the wheels on that for crying out loud. And I'll, wouldn't you just love to have that somewhere on your patio or backyard? I would merchandise it to the nth degree. Okay, I saw this one and I couldn't help but take this picture. I just thought it was really cute. Bug drugs and garden pharmacy. What is probably one of the number one things that people come into a garden center to ask about? First of all, I want to be successful, but somebody's eating my plants. I don't know if he wiggles. I don't know if he's got big brown eyes and called Bambi. Um, 
I, I need something and I need to fix it and I need to fix it now before I choke Bambi. And I have one of those happening right now at my house. Um, so there's, look at those gorgeous proven winter banners, but those are banners. Look at how beautifully staged this particular picture is because they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, <clears throat> we got about 40 plants on that first level. And you'll notice it's up on cinder blocks. It's not down on the ground. I do not have to bend over to pick it up. The next one goes just a little bit higher and son of a gun, look at the two beautiful proven winter banners right there. It, it, again, it's gonna be hard. Look at a Z pattern. Do you see the Z pattern? We start with the pink to the blue back over. Um, so we see a, a beautiful setup outside. Let me take you inside. Something so simple as chalk paint somebody in that garden center that you have is a DIY person that can put this together and somebody has got great handwriting that they can do this. Take a look at where the people are standing. Take a look at how high the, the tables are. That works out just perfect. But notice how high that sign is. So it's now easy for me to read. I can read it that the, again, I'm old, but most people, the font, we don't want to be looking at size like two or three fonts to read something. We want to have something specific there that we need to look at. Let me see if I can play with this a little bit. So we had acid loving, um, dappled, did somebody really say dappled shade? Wow. Okay. Fussy hardy. Now, is that great in pots? Show stopping. There you go. Um, then we got people that that writing. Does anybody know who writes like that? Wow, I'm quite confessive. Um, all right, so let's move on to easy care plants. Something so simple as the signing down a little bit lower. Again, pretty wood um, display area. I love this particular one because I would probably say to a friend of mine, oh, come over here and take a look at this sign. The, the one that said flowers can't solve problems, but they're a great start. Amen to that, right? or the terracotta and the last line on it that says, and it's just the right amount of shabby chic. How many times do I ever go in looking for just one terracotta pot? Don't give me a glaze, I'm just looking for a terracotta pot. Signage, doing something different. When I was in Portland um, a couple of years ago and we were doing a tour, I don't like air plants, so sue me. Um, the, I like, I, I'm a maiden hair person, you know, and, and ferns and fluffy and rhododendrons and roses. And I, I like all that. I'm not really an air plant person. However, when I took this picture, I said, how beautiful was that signing? Again, black chalk paint, somebody who is very good um, doing some drawing, some wonderful um, uh, work there and probably anybody under 35 doesn't read cursive so they may not even know what this says um, but I, I just think that this is just a beautiful uh, example of signage and merchandising I, in Pennsylvania again a place I lived for 20 years I know farming areas how beautiful to come into a garden center and see locally grown by this family Maybe I go to church with them. Maybe they're my neighbors down the street. How proud am I to say, oh, I know all of those people up there. It's a sign that now it's an experience. I now have that relationship built with those people. Something so fun on corn shocks and these cute little arrows that you see at different places that say, you can have fun if you go to the left, you can have fun if you go to the right. And well, then there's Al's. Um, Alice has wine and workshop Wednesdays. How many of you, right in the chat, I would go to Alice, right? Just say, I, I'm there. Um, the one he's doing, let's see, this one was predator plants. Well, okay, I may not be interested in predator plants, but if he has a good Chardonnay, I'm all over it. But it gives me the option of all these different times to be able to go and see, um, not only see the garden center, but now I've got education and I'm looking at that going, well, I can't go to the first three, but where can I plug into the rest of them? Now, I said I would get into my lighting. Um, no matter what kind of uh, stores that I have worked with in the past, one of my biggest pet peeves has to do with lighting. Rarely, rarely do I ever see a store that has sufficient lighting. We just don't. We have dark areas. We have areas that it's hard to read. 
And I'm showing you this particular picture because the ceiling is black. And the ceiling, if you have a very high ceiling in your garden center, the black ceiling is going to reduce the size and the height feel of that, of that garden center. It's gonna reduce it down a little bit and it's gonna create the eye to come down to root beer and farm and all of that. And it won't be looking up very high. My idea is go to your local garden, um, uh, local uh, hardware store, um, go online, get yourself some track lighting. And I'm telling you, you will not believe the difference of how beautiful your store will look if you add more lighting to it. No matter what you got right now, it isn't enough. I'm not talking about being in the greenhouse and I'm not talking about being outside. I'm talking about actually in a brick and mortar area. If in fact you have a dark area, we go the opposite direction. We go the opposite direction and now we have white ceiling. We put up white, track lighting, we now have a feeling of expanse above our heads, and the lighting again is creating a wonderful ambiance and people are going, I can't read this, I love this, I can see this. You are carrying anything for women, jewelry or whatever, make sure you've got a mirror and make sure you got great lighting. So let's wrap this one up on signage and lighting. It should be professionally done, it should be informative, and you should have efficient lighting. There are people out there that you can plug into uh, Google that will tell you how many uh, lumens you need per square foot in your stores just to make sure that it feels well lit. We've all been in stores that we've walked in and go, did I just walk in a cave, right? Last one, mistake number five is the last impression. I'm gonna go through these kind of quickly because again, I'm bringing to the cash wrap my hard earned money. I'm gonna give you my credit card for your product. Now, it better be a good experience. It better not be one where everybody's talking at the desk. It better not be one where, oh gosh, I just got tired of putting out merchandise. How about something as beautiful as this, a plant information? How about something so informative of your staff? So the last impressions, Anticipate your seasonal traffic that's coming up. Make sure you have people trained, ready to go, informed, to give the best customer service with masks on that you can. Make sure you have neat and clean counters. When I stand there to put my handbag down on your counter, it better be clean. And the women who are on this call right now know exactly what that means. And BMB is bring me back. What did I see today that I didn't buy, that I said, gosh, the next time I go back, I'm gonna buy it. Because I look at something like this when I leave and I go, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I would love to bring my husband back and show him that particular um, setup. I want that, that would fit on our back patio. I know that would work and along with all those proven winter plants, but I want him to see that. That gazebo is just absolutely gorgeous. So take a look at the five mistakes that we could make. And I hope that you looked at the things that were positive. An exterior and entrance, make sure that they're beautiful. Make sure that your displays are well thought out, well merchandised, well handled, well filled in, and that they make a statement that you put them there for a reason, not just because you couldn't find a spot. That merchandising that you take on the task right now in February to, if you don't have one, to make a planogram. Where is everything gonna go all the way around the store on every single shelving unit, everywhere, all the way around? Yes, you can change it, but at least it gives you a start. Next is signage and lighting. Be brutally honest, take all of your staff. Let's go in, let's do a walk through the store. Who feels like it's too dark over here? And stand and look it up. Where could you put in more lighting? Where do you have an outlet? Get an electrician in. It's worth it for the customer to spend more time in your store and make more purchases. And that last impression, I cannot stress this enough. You may have gorgeous things, I know you do, but I also know that there's other people I can buy them from. And right now in the time that we live in, you wanna make sure that if your customer said, I'm gonna get out of my house, I'm gonna put on my mask, I'm gonna to come to their garden center, that it was worth it for them to come, that the last impression was extremely important because in that, they're gonna say, we love your business. So 
It's been a fast time. My name is Ann Obarski. Been around, my business will be 37 years old, March 17th, working in the, a lot in the green industry and in retail. It has been my pleasure. I hope you follow me on any of these. And we're going to throw it over to Jessica, I think, because Jessica's probably got some questions for me. I do. And thank you, Ann. That was fantastic. So I got a couple questions from some folks. You talked about when that customer enters the store and that first 45 degrees that they turn to the right, what happens, Ann, if that's where their cash wrap is? What should they, what should they think about? Oh, <laughs> and that happens frequently. That's a really good question. Um, what I would look at, um, there's two ways to look at it. In, if you had nothing in there, the cash wrap should actually be on the other side. So I'm coming in, I'm going around the store this way and I come out and I would pay for it on the other side. Many times you're finding that that's not doable because all of your computer stuff is there, the, you know, all the electrical and all of that. If there's any way to tighten it so that it's not quite as big as it was, that's okay too. And if there's some way to make it interesting, even on the front part of the cash wrap, um, I'm talking from the cash wrap down, down, you know, just like waist level, we don't want to get past the knees of something that is interesting um, that you've got to sign new just in, and you might only have four plants there or four pots, new pots, so that there is something that grabs my attention as soon as I see it. I worry about the cash rep being on that side in that it's hard for me now to get past you and go take a look at everything else because then I'm going to have to kind of backtrack to come back to pay to come back out. Um, so I would look at it when it's, if it's yucky weather and you're not open right now, I would look at it and go, is there any way we can flip it and put it on the other side? And I guess what I really would also ask is where's that front door? Is it directly Right when we come in on the 45 or is more towards the center of the store, that that's critical also. So um, I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, I think so. And we also had some questions about, you know, when you think about displays in general and having that power aisle that, that goes and directs folks through your store. Let's say in and we see it in other retail, should a garden center, maybe you've got product on a display in the back of the store. Do you ever recommend moving that display further forward? So it looks like things are changing in the store, but maybe it's similar product to what you had last week, but it just changes the look. Is that something that you would recommend? Oh, absolutely. And I can't tell you how many times this question comes up or where people will say, just to answer your question, Jessica, oh, we did that. And, and a couple of our employees said, when did we get that? And it was always there. And it always gives the chance if you're slow, not, something's not going on, you've got employees and you go, let's flip it. Let's take what's in that back corner um, and move that up front. Now, when you talked about the back corner, I will say in everybody's, everybody's garden center is different, but if you've got merchandise that you need to mark down or get rid of, the primary location is your left hand back corner as you walk into the store. So if you walk into the store and you and you look at that back left corner, because that's forcing me to go back and around and take a look for that. And I hate to pull it back on women, but women are always looking for the sale rack. So, you know, that's kind of where you could have it. Um, I saw a store that had actually um, it had some sad plants and they called it the infirmary and that's where they put them. And so those people who are hot shots and say, I have a green thumb and I can make that grow. Um, they go back to that area. So making things move around the store makes it extremely exciting because you will walk in and go, well, it wasn't there before. And you go, well, you, you have to come back more often. We move stuff all around. Great. And then one more quick question about aisle width. What would you recommend in terms of width? Because you talked about Paco Underhill and, and women don't want to brush up against one another. And even now, you know, in, in the in the world that we live in, what would you recommend for power aisle spacing and then potentially, you know, spacing between maybe benches or something of that nature? Well, I, I re defer that one to the ADA because it has you have to be able to get a um, wheelchair through. So you have to take a look at what's the width um, right now. I don't know if it's changed. 
Um, used to be three feet or four feet. I mean, the, I'm, I've lost my numbers on that, but that's what you need to be able to make sure that you can do because I know I've been in garden centers and some hardware stores recently where the entrance is only by steps. So you're, you're not even allowing somebody who's in a wheelchair to get in. And if I can't get through the aisles with a wheelchair, then that's not, that's a safety issue. So again, safety is a big thing. And again, that picture that I showed with the forklift and all that, the safety issues you have, and the, like I said, the hoses where somebody wants to play double Dutch with me, you know, these are things that, that are very, they're just not safe. And we've got to make sure that things sitting on the floor, somebody can trip, somebody can get stuck, somebody in a wheelchair can't get through. All of these things, you have to look at the safety issue. Okay. And the last question, this is kind of a fun one, and I know you talked about, you know, if you want great ideas for merchandising, go to Pinterest. There's just a plethora of information there. So what or what store or what's, um, whether it's our industry or in others, where do you go to find inspiration? What's your favorite? Oh, um, well, I like the stores like Crate and Barrel, Williamson, Sonoma. Um, um, oh, gosh, you, you young ladies will know the one I'm thinking of that always has very expensive. It's they are the best at displays. Um, that's the name. The name uh, has escaped me. It's not. Is it an anthropology, I, maybe? Anthropology. Yes. Thank yeah. you very much. Anthropology is probably one of the best. If you're, if you're gonna add retail into your store, anthropology's windows and what they do in their stores is to me is just unbelievable. But again, like I said, Whole Foods, you know, um, I've got friends, I don't know if you have an Aldi's wherever you are, but I've got friends who go, oh, I get in trouble in the Aldi aisle of home decor. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I've never even seen that. So. It, it's really what your eye sees. Um, I'm a Target fan. I'm a Target fan because of their banners. I'm a Target fan because they also don't play music, which sounds counterintuitive to what I said, I believed every store needs to have. They're one of the very few stores that does not have music in, but they change the banners all the time. They make things interesting. They move things around and they move you through the store and you know their brand. I mean, no in certain circumstances. So. I, I, I'm just, I go everywhere. I look everywhere. I keep my eyes open and I'm all over the internet as well because people are now showing their stuff on the internet. So I'd love to say that there's one store, only look at that one, but look at the store that you love the most and say, what do I love about it? What is it that I like? And I think that helps. That's great. Thank you so much, Ian. I think um, we'll turn it over to Megan to, to end us out. Great, thanks, Jess. And I am going to just take one more minute or so um, of your time. I know we're right up against the hour, but while I had you all here, um, Jess and I just wanted to remind you that certification is now online. It is up. We've been talking about it at the end of a lot of the webinars, um, but it is up and it's live. And as you are getting ready for the, the ne next season and, and a lot of the things that Ann talked about, you know, getting excited about your displays and we hope certification is going to give you some knowledge and get you excited about the new proven winners plants that are coming um, for 2021 spring. So um, if you hadn't had, haven't had an opportunity to do that yet, um, please make sure that you do um, all of these great prizes and, and rewards that come along with certification. Um, that program runs through May 1st. So um, now's a great time to be getting yourself and your team on up and online. Um, and you guys can do that as a group. You can do that individually. We try to make it as easy as possible for you to, um, to get access to this and to complete the certification process so that you can have access to Proven Winners University. Make sure that you have an active retail listing up on our website um, and, and many, many more, more benefits. So please make sure that you do that. And also we just wanted to throw out one more reminder because it really ties into a lot of what Ann was talking about today. Um, it's still, there's still time to join Connect Plus. Um, if you go through the certification process, you'll be at the getting started level anyway, so you'll get those great benefits. Um, but if you're looking to do a little bit more uh, marketing for your Proven Winners program, um, take a look at the basic and enhanced and elite programs. We're past the um, early order discount date, which was January 1st. Um, but there's still an incredible amount of value uh, for what you're getting. And, and we do still have time to do some um, 
to do this program for you, but we're definitely getting to the point that we want you guys to be ready for spring. Um, so if you have questions on Connect Plus or if you're interested in doing that, um, reach out to myself or to Jessica. Um, I'll flash up our information in just a second, um, but we can answer any questions for you or at um, connect at um, provenwonders.com. So lots of different resources to answer your questions. And finally, before we um, hop off this call, I wanted to let you know that we're gonna have one more webinar in this series, um, Getting Ready for Spring with Judy Sharpton. We're so excited that Judy is gonna be joining us. Um, to answer your questions, I feel like it's gonna be really, really great timing at the end of February to really, what last things do you need to do to be getting ready for spring? So that is going to be on Tuesday, February 23rd, again at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, we'll send out a link to register for this, um, for Judy's webinar, when we send out the recording of this webinar. So you can expect that um, probably by the end of the week and hope that you can get on and, and register. Judy is a wealth of great information um, for, for retailers in the garden centers. So with that, um, we just wanna thank you again for taking the time to join us. Uh, we really appreciated all of the questions, the interaction, um, lots of interaction happening after these webinars, which is fantastic as well. If we can't be seeing you, we're so excited that we're able to still be talking with you and that these are getting ideas flowing. So um, we really appreciate that and we hope to be seeing you soon. Have a great afternoon.